Good morning, this is Pumpoids Angling Adventures, the multi-species traveling fishing show. So it has been a long time since I put up a podcast. I had a very busy summer. Um, today I'd like to go over a couple things, kind of what I did over the summer, and then what you can do from late fall into ice season, um, which I like to call no man's land or uh, purgatory, because it can be really tough, but it doesn't have to be. Um, today's episode will be brought to you by Mythic Gear Dry Suits, um, Dry Suits for the Masses, and Beard Head Hats. If you don't have a beard, you can buy one. All different colors, shapes, and sizes. All right, so this summer, um, I have been in uh, Kayak Wars, which is a multi-species um, kayaking tournament. you got a te team of five guys. Um, it's multi-species. You're allowed so many a month for per species. Every species has its own point value. Every species has to be a certain size. Um, right now, with two weeks to go, it looks like I will win um, first for individual for my region, which is uh, pretty cool. Now, what makes this this thing so cool is if you don't have a lot of money or you got kids and you can't travel, even if you're not going to win, you can do this with a couple buddies and... Um, fish in your own water on your own time for your own species hold on one second i have a caller okay back to the show so you can you can fish for any species you want and it's a year-long tournament which is kind of grueling it goes from february to december but it gives you plenty of opportunities to at least participate in a, in a tournament and you know upload your fish and uh, compare it to what other guys are getting, see what you've done from year to year, and you don't have um, the extreme pressure of having to perform on a particular day or spend big money that you don't have. I love fishing other tournaments. Um, I fished a K one KBL tournament this year. It went really well. I got second place. Um, so I mean, if you could, you're a successful bass, successful bass fisherman, you could always do the KBF, KBL, um, Great Lakes. Uh, kayak series has a great program and they usually which kind of cool they fish for multi-species it's just something i'm thinking about doing this year um but it, it, it's something to consider um so this summer i got a lot of one of my points on kayak wars um from carp not a lot of guys fish for them um and when you're trying to be competitive in kayak wars there's two ways you can do it you can try to win as an individual you can kind of win as a team you can try to do kayak man points kayak man points where you get different points for multi-species so i really wanted to finish first in my region for individual so i had to get more points than everybody else so um carp was carp bass carp bass remote and catfish were my ticket but carp was the main one and i got involved with a company called k1 baits which was really cool and um k1 baits gave me a bunch of pre-made baits and they worked good they worked really good but I like to make my own baits. So then K1's like, okay, we'll try our flavoring over the, you know, the, the grocery store stuff that you're using. And man, I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. Just not my, my carp numbers went way up from this year to last year. I think I have 250 carp registered in this tournament alone, all over 17 inches. Um, the biggest one, probably about, you know, 30 and a half inches. Uh, so 250 carp in the summer season that's absolutely incredible and that tells you how good k1 baits works another th another thing that added to my numbers was i got it hooked up with uh, dave's tangle free weights now they're rubber coated round weights the rubber coating not only is it safer for the environment and then the insides are made out of steel so you're not dealing with lead but the rubber coating helps slip your your weight out of rocks it it's more um tangle free than any other weight on the market it's called dave's tangle free now i use these on running rigs when i wasn't using for floats on carp and because i wasn't dealing with as many snags and retying that's longer i'm in the water longer in water more chances i get more chances i get more fish so that was pretty dang incredible so i mean um oh and i also want to tell everybody about my new um carp bait that i'm making it's super easy take half a can of pre-cooked chickpeas you take six pieces of bread you add a handful of sugar, and then um, the K1 makes this bait um, called um, XS flavoring, and it's used for boilies. 
and you just want to use like and they have all different flavors and i have not had a flavor that doesn't work but my favorites are pineapple tutti fruity banana cream grape and um you can put um fruity peach and you can fill up a, a cap a cap and a half full put that all in a food processor and then you can add a little bit of oats if it gets too loose but you just want it where you can squish it and you can literally make it in five minutes and you have a you know, a quart bag full of bait for the day, and it really, really works awesome. If you're a carp fisherman, you got to try this dough bait. Okay, so, you know, no man's land or purgatory, you know, the time between now and ice fishing, you know, sucks. Let's face it, it sucks. It's not, it's not a, a, it's not a, a fishing season. They don't talk about, you know, this season, they talk about, you know, open water and hard water. They don't talk about the in-between. Now this year, you really need to get out. And you need to get out soon because we've had unseasonably warm weather, which means we don't have ice on the water yet. So if you're kayak fishermen, just make sure you're staying safe with um, a dry suit like Mythic Gears or a wetsuit. Um, if you're unsure, make sure you know you got plenty of layers of warm clothing. Now the, the open water has. I mean, guys are still catching fish. I was just out. Uh, this weekend crappie fishing and I did uh, what I call a, a back paddle or back trolling in my kayak for crappie fishing so I'm in my kayak and picture me paddling really slow backwards and I'm using um double rigs you know rigs with two baits on it so I'm using two lake fork shads or two little gitsits or two tubes in this case it was two tubes on one rod two lake forks on another sh another rod and I'm using um, just those cheap foam weighted weighted floats and that lets me get them out there and I'm going about three to four feet down now it's a shallow lake no more than you know 12 feet most water i'm fishing it is seven to three feet so i'm fishing about three to four feet down i usually have one set for you know three feet one set for four feet that way i can get suspended fish or have fish come up and hit them and basically you just slowly start pedaling backwards and you're watching your two rods out in front of you and you can you can see the hit you can see how fast your baits are going you know, if you're if you're trolling forward, you can only watch at front of your line. And you know, if you don't have a speed thing on your locator, you don't know how fast you're going this way. You can see that all you got to do, and you just got to get them moving. You're not trucking with them. It's not like you're doing crankbaits. You just need to get these baits moving. Cra crappy plastics in general, when you're when your water's still, all you're doing is a twitch, twitch, pause. They barely need any movement to get a fish to bite. When the wind blows and you're anchored, you can just let it bounce in the wind. A lot of times, you don't need to move the bait at all. Same was the case here. When you're back trolling crappies, you don't have to work the baits at all. Basically, I'm just paddling and watching, and you're covering a lot of water. And if you really get on them, then you can anchor up, and you can you know you can dissect that area. And even now, I've been starting to bring ice rods in early in spring and fall um, for crappies and gar and and bluegills and bass because if i get on a spot that's deeper and i'm marking some fish they will hit right under your kayak your anchor ropes do not bother them in the least so i always have a couple ice rods so you know i dial them in by back trolling i'll go in there i'll make a few fan casts let my boats go through i'll get a few that way if i start marking fish on a locator right underneath me i'll drop a darter i'll drop a cicada i'll drop a ice jig i'll drop um a spoon and you'll get a lot more bonus fishing man it's a lot of fun and you get to taste ice fishing before ice fishing actually comes so then you're stuck with the true limbo is when we get skim ice what are you going to do you know you can't you, what am i going to do i can't get on the lights there's skim ice unless you can break through it in your kayak and there's some open water you know what i mean or you can fish off the side you know you're done but you're not um, that's when you go to the rivers. All right. So every river, there's usually spots that don't freeze over. Now you, you got to be patient. You got to sit. I mean, you're not going to be catching fish like you did, you know, on hot, you know, in the spring and, you know, in the, in the summer months, but you can catch fish. And if you really want to go catch fish, you just got to be dressed warm and safe and go out there and do it. Now the rivers, anywhere there's not frozen and there's a little bit of deep water, I suggest you fish there. Dams are really popular. Any place you know of a warm water discharge, it's legal for you to fish go there warm water warm water lakes uh, discharge with nuclear nuclear lakes that are still open and allow fishermen you can go to those um i usually head to a dam sometimes we wade you know with big thick neoprene waders and all our gear and tons of hand warmers and we'll fish for a couple hours and usually it's for walleyes um there's musky fishermen out there all year uh, we get a few smallmouth, we get a few cats, we get a little bit of everything, especially by the dams. Warm water discharges, uh, same thing. 
but when it's really cold we'll get out multiple layers and we'll just go as long as we can stand it an hour or two so there's one dam we like to fish not only because it has a bunch of little a bunch of little walleyes there to keep us busy but there's a really good restaurant across the street so if you're fishing from shore just waiting together you know bring a buddy you know fish for that hour or two you get a great couple of fish great if you don't then you know go get a new, nice breakfast in my case it's you know country fried steak and gravy and it's really fantastic so you don't have to like you know my whole thing here is multi-species fishing and getting the average guy on fish and you can catch fish all year round and it doesn't have to cost you a lot of money you just got to be willing to go out there and do it and be safe so this is a uh, pond boy for pond boys angling adventures um I look forward to talking to you guys again, maybe, you know, first thing this winter when uh, ice fishing starts. I thank you so much for listening, um, especially since I don't do shows every week. And um, you guys have great holidays. Merry Christmas. God bless you all. And um, have a great night. And thank you so much for listening.